looking at the criteria that will help us to justify our cost allocation decisions and therefore help us choose a method, we're going to start with the operating department being able to bear the cost. In this case, the focus is on charging operating departments that generate the most revenue. That's because the operating departments that generate the most revenue can bear most of the costs. They have the revenues to cover those costs. The basis for the allocation could be something similar to revenue or profit. Let's do an example. Green Corporation has two service departments. Human Resources has direct overhead costs of $340,000 and Information Technology has direct overhead costs of $250,000. Both of these service departments have zero revenue. The company's operating departments are residential with a total revenue of $1,850,000 and direct overhead costs of $670,000. They also have commercial with total revenue of $3,250,000 and total direct overhead costs of 980000 Service department costs are allocated based on a percentage of revenue generated. First, we have to figure out total service department overhead. 340000 plus 250000 is equal to 590000 It is this amount that must be allocated between the two operating departments, residential and commercial. Total revenue, 1850000 plus 3,250,000 is equal to 5,100,000. In order to allocate service department overhead to residential, we would take 1,850,000 divided by the 5,100,000, multiply it times the 590,000, and that would cause an allocation of $214,020. In order to allocate to commercial, we would take the 3,250,000 divided by the 5,100,000 multiplied by the 590,000 and that would cause an allocation of 375,980. If we then add in the direct costs from the operating departments themselves, we would get an updated overhead cost for residential of 884,020. We would have an updated overhead cost for commercial of 1,344,980. When you think about that, by adding additional costs into each of the operating departments, it will reduce the operating department's profitability by about 11.5%. Clearly, service department costs can be allocated to the operating departments using this method. But what's the problem? Well, if one of your objectives of allocating service department costs was to motivate behavior in managers or employees, this method definitely doesn't do that. In fact, the more revenue the department generates, the more costs they will be allocated. If the managers are rewarded based on profitability, this would demotivate them. In addition, their use of the resources from the service departments does not change what they are charged. So there's no incentive to reduce consumption of resources or save on costs. This is likely the worst method used to allocate service department costs, although that doesn't mean that companies don't use it. What other methods can be used to allocate service department costs to operating departments? Thinking back about justification number one, an activity of the operating department causes the cost to happen and can be tracked. Here we use cost drivers to represent the use of resources by the operating department. For example, what if one of the service departments is human resources? The business can review human resource activities and track a driver that represents the use of the human resource services. Human resources might provide payroll services, as well as hiring, firing, and information about benefits. In this case, the number of employees might be an appropriate cost driver, since the more employees a department has, the more the department will use the services of human resources. By choosing a driver that represents the use of the service department's resources and allocating service department costs to operating departments, the company can obtain high quality cost information for decision making. What are the most common cost drivers that might be used to allocate service department costs? After all, if we want to provide high quality information, we need to ensure that the cost driver represents the use of the resources. Remember that we have to be able to trace the cost driver at a low enough cost that using it as an allocation base is not cost prohibitive. 
Here are some common service departments and possible cost drivers that can be used to allocate service department costs. However, every company has to use their professional judgment and the circumstances of the business when choosing a cost driver to use. Accounting might use the number of accounting transactions processed, but they could also use the time spent. Janitorial services could use square meters cleaned, but they could also use time spent. This makes sense if there are some departments that take longer to clean even though they have less square meters of size. Purchasing can use the number of orders received, but they could also use the number of items ordered, which is different than the number of actual orders received. They could also use the total cost of items ordered. Human resources could use the number of employees, but they could also use the time spent or the number of inquiries. Administration could use the number of employees or they could use the direct costs of the operating departments. Once a cost driver is chosen, there are three methods that can be used to allocate service department costs. One, the direct method. Two, the step-down method, also called the sequential method. And three, reciprocal method. Each of these three methods can be allocated using either a single rate method or a dual rate method. Over the next few videos, I'm going to demonstrate the three methods using the single rate method. In each video, I'll show you not only how to apply the method, but also speak about the pros and cons of each method. Finally, I'll do a comparison of the methods so you can clearly understand the impact on the company's decisions. As a last step, I'll demonstrate the dual rate method so you have a better idea of how to apply that method to the allocation of service department costs. Before we start, I want to remind you once again, service department costs are not allocated for financial reporting purposes. Both IFRS and ASPE specifically require service department costs to be recorded as operating costs on the income statement. Instead, the focus of allocating service department costs is for business decision making. In managerial accounting, our focus is on providing information to ensure that the business operates profitably. In that way, the financial statements the business eventually releases show a strong financial position and maximum profit. Okay, let's get started allocating support department costs.